high school. It comes with the unique aspect of kinda having free time and kinda knowing what to do with it. Some people get jobs and earn valuable money and experience. Some people have a social life and make lasting memories and lifelong friends. But some people watch Danny or Mrs. Ziz on YouTube and get inspired, even obsessed. For me, I got recommended some videos by Black Thorn Prod during my freshman year, which led me down the game dev rabbit hole to making this channel. And according to my YouTube analytics, most of my audience is in the 18 to 24 age range, but for some reason I doubt that. So if you are in high school and you're wondering if it's really possible to release a commercial game before you graduate, it definitely is. I released my first Steam game, Breezy, a couple months after graduating, and I could have easily done it sooner if I'd had this video when I started out. Before that, I released my first mobile game on Google Play back in 2021, during my sophomore year. So, no matter how far along you are, I want to give you some tips. These aren't hard and fast rules, but they're the advice I'd give to my younger self after he watched that first Blackthorn Prod video back in 2019. It can be tough knowing where to start when you first decide you want to make games. My first piece of advice is, set goals. What do you see yourself doing by the time you graduate, or even after? Why do you want to make games? Write this stuff down somewhere, or at least keep it in the back of your mind. There are two big things to remember when coming up with your long-term goals. First, if you're doing it to make money, you're going to be sorely disappointed. You'd be better off working hard in school to go to college or attending a trade school. Making games seems like one of the easier hobbies to turn into a job, but it's so risky that it's not worth it the vast majority of the time. The second thing is, these goals can, and probably will, change over time. Don't assume you'll be the same person after learning to make games. You'll be a lot smarter, and you'll have a lot more direction. Once you've figured out your goals, it's time to take inventory. What skills do you already have, and which ones are you interested in learning? Do you know how to program, make art, or compose music? Marketing is an often overlooked part of game development that we'll get into later. If you enjoy writing or making social media posts, you're probably pretty good at it. If you're hung up on this part, think about the things you've done inside and outside of school. Classes you had fun with, group projects you took the lead on, and even the other kinds of YouTube videos you watch. Often, these things are skills you developed over time without realizing, since you just thought of them as schoolwork or interests. Another thing to note when taking inventory is people. Do you have any friends who also make games, or who also want to make games? If you don't, that's okay. Neither did I when I got started. But if you do, Working at a team can be a motivating factor, especially a team of best friends with different skill sets. These can be online friends, but real life friends are even better. After taking inventory, you're ready to get straight into learning. It'll seem like a lot to take in at first, since to make a game, you'll usually need a little bit of everything. Art, programming, you name it. My advice here is to learn by making. Don't stress out about what engine or other programs to use when you're just starting out. As much as possible, just try to use what you already know, even if it doesn't seem like the best choice. For example, for the first few years of my game dev career, I used Scratch to make art and GarageBand to make music. You never notice it though, all you notice is art and music. If, after a while, you find you don't like something, look for alternatives, give them a try, and figure out what you'd rather use. The key here is, don't be afraid to change up your workflow. You'll need some learning resources to get started too. I won't recommend any specific tutorials here, since they tend to go out of date, and since I don't want to lead you towards anyone's software, but I can give you some general tips. The big one is, stay out of tutorial limbo, the infinite cycle of following tutorials to make your games without ever making something original. And I'm talking about full game tutorials here, not for things like save systems or movement mechanics. You can follow full game tutorials for sure, but I want to put two restrictions on it. First, after you make a game by following a tutorial, try to expand on it. I'd say spend at least as long as you did making the initial game. Try to add your own twist, or at least make some changes. The next thing is, after every tutorial you follow, spend some time trying to make a game of your own. Once you're able to make something you're proud of, quit following full game tutorials. Like I mentioned with software tools, you might not do everything optimally at first, but you'll build an understanding of how to do it yourself. Another piece of advice that's important at all stages of your game dev career, stay small and fail fast. The best way to do this is with game jams. You don't have to wait until Ludum Dare or the GMTK jam to do one either. There are tons of smaller game jams on itch.io with only a dozen or so participants. You're much more likely to get quality feedback there, and maybe even win. The only game jam I've won to this day was a very small jam where the host streamed every single entry. It was neat to get feedback in real time. For any game jam though, focus on the second half of developing a game. Polish, bug fixing, and especially releasing. Don't be afraid to publish your game, even if it's bad. Releasing and publishing your game is the best way to get feedback on your methods, motivate yourself, and document your projects for future you. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, but when can I start making a real game? 
I was there too, and I certainly tried. My first project, a city building game called Omniopolis, was the result of that gung-ho mentality. I only lasted about two weeks on it, and it wasn't very fun by the end. The best way to get a taste of a larger project is to give yourself a deadline. Not a deadline to finish the project, but just a period of time to work on a big game until you step back and stop working. I've been doing this myself with my recent projects Deck Dojo and Sudamop. I gave myself one month to do as much as I could. I'm really proud of both of those projects. Neither of them are finished, but they taught me a lot and they're still pretty impressive. When you're still learning though, doing a larger project is a bad idea since you'll be learning so much that you'll constantly be itching to start over with your new skills. Much better to put your pencil down, admire your work, and move on to the next one. Finally, the most important part of learning game development is learning to plan. Start with game jams and prototypes. Schedule out your time. For one to three day projects, schedule out each part of your day. For longer games, plan out what you want to get done each day. Also, especially during school, get used to unexpected stuff popping up. A sudden deluge of homework, a mandatory family road trip, or any number of other things could throw a monkey wrench into your plans. You'll have to learn to get flexible with your schedule, but once you've learned this lesson, you'll finally reach the stage of... My first caution when it comes to taking on bigger projects is, make sure you really want to. If game jams and smaller prototypes are fun, and if they fulfill your goals, or if you've tried making a bigger game and it just doesn't suit you, don't feel any pressure to change up what works. In fact, if that's you, you can go ahead and click off. How about you watch this video instead? Okay, are they gone? Alright, now it's just you. You guys that just aren't satisfied, you really want to make a full game? Well, as long as you acknowledge the risks, I guess I'll give you my advice. The first point is this, don't make your dream game. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, there was a big trend that peaked a couple of years ago where people would talk about making their dream game. This is usually an idea that you've had since your childhood of a game you've always wanted to make, meaning it's normally just a thinly veiled mishmash of one or two Nintendo games from a few decades ago, and it almost never ends up getting finished. Why? Because it's extremely hard to put a limitation on your dreams. But that's what you have to do to make a game. So, don't make your dream game. Come up with an idea that sounds fun to play and reasonable to implement. Make a prototype first and determine how hard it would be to make and how fun it would be to play. But, once you do figure out an idea for your game, the next step is plan, 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 plan. and consult that plan throughout the whole cycle of development. I laid out this three-step plan in a video a few months ago. First, plan the core features, basically every major separate element that will be in your game. So not each level, but each movement mechanic, UI element, etc. Then plan your axes of expansion. By that, I mean the ways you could expand your game once you're done with the core features. Usually this will be the levels, but it might be skins for a multiplayer game, playable characters, or achievements. For example, for my game Suit'em Up, these are the weapons, the enemies, the music tracks, and the room types. So I added a few of each of these to the prototype and wrote down how long it would take to make one of each. Once you've done that, it's time to plan out your schedule. Maybe not day by day, but at least week by week. In order to do this properly, you need to know your core features, your axes of expansion, and how long it would take to develop of each of these. The most important aspect of this is picking a reasonable deadline. And yes, a deadline is essential. My advice is to take only about twice as long as the biggest game you've done so far. So if you've done a week-long game jam, don't skip straight to a three-year Steam game. Do a two-week prototype, then a month-long mobile game, then a three-month collaborative project. You see where I'm going. But once you've picked a deadline, don't be afraid to adjust it if circumstances change. Ideally, you've left some buffer time in, but say you start a really tough class and have a bunch of homework every night, or say you keep getting burnt out and need to take it slower. There's a balance between following your schedule to the letter and doing what's pragmatic. This comes more naturally with experience, but practice prioritizing. As for the game itself, one thing a lot of game devs, including myself, are guilty of is neglecting to market your game and get feedback. Part of this is letting your friends and classmates play it. If they're not getting the hang of it, maybe it's time to work on a tutorial. Marketing is especially difficult if you're used to game jams where you get immediate feedback. Getting the word out about your game is simple in theory, but it's such a can of worms that I can't even start to get into the subject, besides telling you to set up your store page as early as possible, of course. A good starting point for marketing is to come up with a persona of your average player. You can even give them a name, and think from their perspective. What social media posts would catch their eye? What Steam description would tickle their fancy? This is another thing that really just comes with experience, and admittedly one aspect I haven't fully cracked. One thing I am sure about is, be able to realize if things are going haywire. Are you not making progress at the right pace? Is working on your game starting to feel like a chore rather than a fun hobby? Is it impacting your schoolwork? Which, need I remind you, is much more important. Know when to adjust your schedule or pare back your plan, or even pull the plug on a project. If you're not having fun and keeping things under control, it's not worth it. And while you're chugging along making your game, remember to keep learning. Even if it's not feasible to try out different workflows, at least watch a lot of other people's devlogs. Interact with people on Discord and Reddit if that's your thing. Soak up all the knowledge you can. And remember, the bigger the project, the more you learn. 
This is a natural quality of game development, especially solo work, so don't get discouraged and think your game is inferior because it was made by your past self. That attitude leads to restarted or cancelled projects, and those get in the way of the number one piece of advice I can offer. Finish your game. Or, more accurately, know when your game is finished. There's always a little more you can do, but if you've reached that deadline and you're satisfied with what you've done, it's time to click that release my game button and send your creation out into the world. Of course, you're not letting go of the reins here, you can still release post-launch updates and your marketing should be in full tilt. And hey, if you're still in high school at this point, congratulations! You have something to put on your college application. If not, well, you've got something to put on your resume. At this stage, my last bit of advice is to take inventory once again. Think about how much you've learned since you started out, and how much you have to show for it. Then, think about your future, since now, you get to start all over again. So, making games is hard work, but it's a whole lot of fun. I'm assuming there are two types of people watching this video right now. The first is aspiring game devs who may or may not be in high school. And for you, I say, what are you waiting for? If you're still in the watching YouTube phase instead of the making games phase, you're either in denial or lazy, or maybe you don't have a computer. But if it's that other thing I said, quit watching this video, start watching a tutorial or something. The other type of person is the established game dev who's making sure I give sound advice. Thank you for your service, sir or madam. In fact, why not let us know in the comments how you got started and if you have any advice advice of your own. And if you want to know how I got started, tune in for The Game Dev Journey Part 2, coming soon to a YouTube near you. Have a good day. Nice. Oh. Hey, oh. Oh. Uh, mm. Nice. Oh. Okay. Bouncy.